Welcome back to Mickey Car Beauty. I'm Mickey Carico, and on my channel, I love to talk about luxury beauty and skincare. And today, I will be doing a first impressions and try on of the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Powder. And I also got my hands on two of the new Gucci blushes in two colors Bright Coral 04 and then Rosy Beige 05. So, if you're interested in that, keep watching. So today we're going to be trying on the Patrick Ta foundation. I ended up picking this up through Sephora and it's Patrick Ta's first foundation, I believe. It's the Major Skin Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. And I ended up picking it up in light medium four. And I used the finer shade feature on Sephora as well as watching Gigi's Beauty work more or less, and I'll put her linked below to her review. We're pretty much foundation twinsies and I saw her review and I really wanted to try this because I've heard really great things about Patrick Ta. So here is the, uh, here is the packaging. It's kind of on brand. It's this kind of rose gold packaging he always has. And I'm looking really closely at the ingredients because that's something I always look at because I have really sensitive skin. So my face is bare face right now. Um, it's very oily because it's, it's still hot. We're coming on the heels of summer, even though we're in September. And so you can see it just, you know, I just being really transparent, like I have real skin and real, you know, challenges, um, like everyone, I don't know anyone who has perfect skin. So I'm having kind of like a rosacea um, flare up. This happens once in a while. It's usually food related or stress related and usually heat related. So it's, I've been really, really hot. We don't have air conditioning here in the Northwest. So I always look at the ingredients and something that I always look for is bismuth to make sure there's no bismuth in the products I put on my face because I had learned uh, through using Hourglass that bismuth is actually a trigger for me for rosacea and as well as acne and whiteheads. So I'm looking um, at Patrick Ta. His blushes have bismuth in it, but not this. So that is great. And on the Sephora website, it says pressed powder formula, natural finish, cream formula, best for oily combo normal skin, medium coverage, good for pores. This is what the packaging is. It's very on brand for how his packaging is. I'm not really a fan. I'm always kind of tripped up with this, but I just got to remember that it's like, I always have to do this and it's, I'm not going to have to be careful because it's reflective rose gold. And this is what the foundation looks like. So it's the cream has a cover, which I appreciate. If I am traveling with this, which I'm hopefully planning to do, I would have to bring a separate brush and a cream applicator. I usually don't like cream foundations because I have a lot of pores here, like really a, like a lot of texture because of the rosacea situation I have. And often cream foundation will just either sit on top or even if it looks nice, it'll lift at the end of the day because I'm so oily. So we'll see how this works. I've been using this Live Tinted Hugar 3-in-1 Mineral Sunscreen moisturizer and primer and I love this product uh, a lot of times SPF has white cast which you can really see on tan or brown skin and I don't find this to be the case for this product it's uh, created by a South Asian woman who had issues with SPF and white cast so this is her skincare. Okay, so that is what it looks like with the primer. It's like, so it's pretty creamy, but very light. It does not have a smell. And that is the powder. I'm wondering if it's too light. No, I think it'll be a good match. We'll see, because I'm at the tail end of my tan. And so that is what the foundation looks like. And that is the powder. Okay, I'm taking my jumbo base, which is a cream for creamers. Just taking some of that and has a mirror, but I'd have to flip that down in order to see what I'm doing. Okay, so initial application, I can see it's pretty light.
and I think it's a good day to test this out because my skin is having a flare up and it's not perfect. So I can see if actually realistically how much it's going to cover of any sort of blemishes or imperfections on my face. It reminds me almost of the Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm. The Yummy Skin Blurring Balm. Okay, so that's a really light application, kind of like very natural. I don't see it settling into my fine lines or texture, so I'll get in close so you can see. And that's what this side is without foundation, and this is with. It's a pretty light coverage. Okay, I'm going to take the clean side of this. That's what it looks like. And this side of my face is definitely more red. So that's kind of why I'm going in with a beauty blender because I think I might need a little bit a more coverage. I mean, it's definitely going on more with the beauty blender. Okay, I don't like the application as much. Actually, it looks more like cakey. I don't know if you can see, whereas this looks a little bit more natural. It looks a little bit more cakey on this. And actually, because it's not an exact match, it looks a little bit, um, just a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take the brush and this worked product more and just like buffing it in. Because I, I see on the side with the beauty blender, it's actually welling into my pores of my nose. Okay, that's not bad. It's actually a lot better than I thought it would be for cream foundation. Okay, I'm back. I did some color correcting for my circles and then I'm using the Kosas concealer under my eyes in 6.2N. I'm using this one because this, I can see that this foundation is kind of more of like a natural looking foundation. And so it's been about two minutes. This is how the foundation is wearing. I can feel it definitely feels a little tacky. So what I'm gonna do is actually take the Wayne Goss airbrush brush and then kind of go into here. Okay, so that is what it looks like under with that. It's not a brightening powder. It's kind of like my skin exactly. So let's just uh, go in to the rest of my face with this powder. I think the shade match is fine. I think it's pretty good considering it's usually hard for me to find a shade match. I could see this being kind of like an on the go, good travel option. This powder is pretty good. It doesn't have a smell. I don't know if it would replace kind of my holy grail of Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, I don't, I think it could be a good on the go two in one. It's not my favorite powder I could see it's pretty light. There's something about that Charlotte Tilbury that's like really blurring I like, but this kind of looks like a natural powder. It's kind of like my exact skin tone, a little bit, just a tad, a little bit too ashy. It's not warming. It's not very, it's, you can see it's a little bit too light for me. So I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out my Charlotte Tilbury so you can see. The Charlotte Tilbury in medium too, and this is the Patrick Ta in light medium four. You can see it's slightly lighter and this is like a slight slightly more warm can you see that charlotte tilbury and this is the patrick ta and that's also just you can see there's more pigment in there or just more product the way it lays so it's very this patrick ta is very very light i don't really like it for on initial impressions i don't know if i like it for under the eye because it's not brightening, but in a pinch it'd be okay. What I can see already is that it doesn't cover, this foundation will not cover blemishes or rosacea or even texture, I would say. And I can, I don't know if you can see a little bit how I have texture here. There you go. You can see that texture here and then texture here. It's not gonna really cover that. And that's always the issue I have with cream foundations is that they it doesn't really cream foundations don't really go well with my 
textures and my skin issues. The closest cream foundation that I used for years was Shiseido. They're kind of like their version of the MAC powder foundation. And if you know, all of you know that like that MAC foundation, like the two in one where it was like a powder cream foundation and you just put on a sponge and it was just like flawless. That was a brilliant product. I used that it, probably in during high school and my early 20s. And then I graduated to Shiseido because it has that tech, Japanese technology. And I use that in my uh, probably mid 20s to early 30s. And so I haven't found anything kind of to beat that. But if you know of any, let me know. I'm kind of curious how that, I think Dior has a product or and Suku as well. So I've been kind of curious about those. We'll see how this wears. I think it looks pretty nice, but I don't think it looks like anything exceptional. Uh, but you let me know how it thinks, you think that looks. Moving on to the Gucci blush. I ended up getting these at Nordstrom and I got the colors rosy beige and bright coral. And these retail at $49. They are now available at Sephora. I've tried the Gucci bronzer and I liked it for a while, but I just didn't like the smell or how it was laying on my texture of my skin. So if there's one thing that Gucci definitely does right, it's the packaging. And look how beautiful this is. It's beautiful. It's this pale peachy pink with stars. Just looks. I love it. I love it. So it's got this kind of like two little divots here. There. And it one it opens kind of like this. You can see. Okay, so it opens like this. And here is the first color in bright coral, 04. So pretty. And here is rosy beige. And I went on a limb with this because I wanted something a little bit more nude. I don't hope it doesn't look muddy on me, but we'll see. But I definitely am big on corals, as you know. And that looks, I can tell that'll look really pretty, at least the color, and we'll see how this looks. Um, there is a smell. I think all Gucci products have a scent kind of like Dior and Chanel. Um, again, it smells a little bit like that bronzer smell, which I was not a fan of, but moreover, that bronzer didn't work for me. So that had to go. So here is the Gucci and I just want to do like a light swatch, how that looks. And then here is the rosy beige. It's a little deeper. Here's the coral from Gucci and the rosy beige. So yeah, there's a little bit of luminosity. Ooh, you know what this is a remind me, reminding me of already? It's reminding me of the Tom Ford Sheer Cheek Duos. I'm gonna pull that out, which is this. <laughs> Don't have a type, so pretty similar. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna um, do a swatch of these. And these are Big Gelée formula, the different formula altogether, but very similar. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, the this one on top. Okay, that's more pink, not co as coral. And that's definitely a frosty. Okay, it, although it looks similar, it's not. So this translate, I mean, these are meant to be kind of like a highlighter blush combo, whereas these are actually two different blushes. Okay, so it's not a dupe. I just thought I, it reminded me of that formula and that it's kind of luminous. Other one it reminds me of is again the Suku Melting Powder Blush. And this is in 03, 02 Haru Oto, which is the more pinky one. Okay, and then this is 03 Komi, Komiguri. Komiguri. And this is more of the coral one. We'll see how that looks. It's very similar. And I would say almost more pigmented. So you can see why I love this formula. It's um, got this luminosity to it. So that's pretty close. Thinking my Pat McGrath blush in maybe Nude Venus. We'll see. That's Nude Venus and that is the Gucci one. This is more pink. Okay, and this is Desert Orchard, which I think is not um, similar to either of these. It's more of a nude blush. Yeah, that's not anywhere near similar. 
And then I pulled out my Pat McGrath Duo in Cosmic Coral. And maybe the closest would be this, but this is pretty deep. Remember this being more like a bronzer. Yeah, that's, well, let's see. Let me do that one a little bit closer. Yeah, that's definitely more pigmented, so not similar. Okay, the other one I have is Dior Charnel, and that's more of also kind of like a neutral blush. So very shimmery compared to that. So do another swatch of that. Yeah, that's more coral, the Gucci one. And then I have the Dior Backstage Coral color, which is this one. It's definitely more pinky coral. And then the last two I have are Chantecai and Laughter and then Bellini. So let me show you those. And I still think those aren't gonna be spot on. So this is Laughter and Coral, Chantecai, and this is Bellini, uh, Laura Mercier. Coral from the Chantecai. This is Bellini and this is the Gucci. So no exact dupe. It's definitely like similar in vibe to a lot of these, but not the same. I'm trying the Wayne Goss Squirrel Hair Brush and just rolling into that. So that's pretty pigmented. Um, I'm going to just do this. The mirror is way too small. So yes, it's really cute, but it's not functional. Mirror here. That's really pretty. Yes, there's a luminosity into this. This is just, it reminds me of that melting powder blush from Suku. You see that? It's almost like there's like a sheen, but it doesn't, I don't think it shows texture, but you know, we'll see. This is the Gucci blush in bright coral. I'm gonna clean this brush off and then go in the other side with the rosy beige. Okay, just rolling it on there. Definitely more orange. This is more like a traditional rose color. I'm trying to buff it out a little bit. It's still pretty. There's still a luminosity to it. Although I do prefer this one just because it's a little bit more brightening, but this is, you know, this could be good for every day, but it's also maybe warmer for the fall, but this is definitely still, I got the, it's really nice back here. Let me see if I can build it back there as well on this side. And I'm probably putting on way too much, but I'm trying to show you the blush colors for the sake of the video. I don't think I would put this much blush on, but I think I want you to see what the color looks like and if it's buildable, especially if you have a deeper skin. Okay, so that is Rosy Beige. Coral Rosy Beige. I tend to steer away from these type of colors because this is the color, although it looks really natural, it's the color that I actually have of rosacea when I'm having a breakout. I think you saw that. Whereas this is definitely um, warmer in terms of a warmer look, but this is more like neutral. Let me know which side you like better. Definitely a smell. So what I, you know, on, a, on first application, I could smell it, but I don't, I don't think I smell it anymore, which is nice because I think I remember, at least for me, the Gucci bronzer, I could still smell it throughout the day. Okay, so I'm going to do my makeup look for a different video and then I will be back. Okay, beauty fam, so I'm back with my full face complete. I have a review of this 
quad that I have on my face in another video and I'll link it above and put it in below in the description box. And so I basically have a Chanel tweed quad in on my eyes. And if you want to guess which one, you'll have to click or you can tell me below. And then I have a Chanel lipstick as well on my lips. Let's start with the Patrick Ta foundation. So, so far is playing well with other products. Uh, I'll have to see how it plays the rest of the day of in terms of my oily skin. And I usually, you know, this is again, this is an initial review. I like to try to at least, you know, use the new foundations for a week to see how they wear, but it's worn down really well. I would have to say that it's doing pretty well for a cream foundation. I kind of have like really low expectations for cream foundations. So it's a pretty good match. I think I'm, you know, I'm losing my tan here, but that's a pretty good match. I do see some welling in my nose here. So that doesn't look as cute as I thought, but you know, I'm wondering if I could actually touch that up. Let's see if we can do the nose area. I'm gonna go into here, just carve it out a little bit more and see. The foundation is better than I thought it would be. It's like a light cream foundation. It's not super thick. I am not too much of a fan of the powder. Like the powder just feels kind of almost like, I'm just gonna say it, it feels like kind of like a cheap, um, it feels cheap. It feels like a cheap powder. Like the foundation, the cream foundation is nice, but this, this powder, I'm not a fan of. Like I think it feels just, I don't know, like kind of drugstore kind of, drugstore type of um, powder. And I'm trying to let, use this to lay up under here so in a pinch it's great i like the idea of a two-in-one but sometimes like two-in-ones aren't like magical unicorns that's the thing so i think my face looks great because i actually buffed it with the hummingbird buffing powder and then put some sisley on so i'm a person that likes to layer my products especially powders so i actually think if this product looks even nicer when i just left you because i put the buffing the blurring hummingbird blurring powder by Chantecai and a sisley loose powder on so we'll see and i'll pin a comment below to tell you how it's wearing and then usually even after a week or two how it's wearing i'll let you know how the foundation is going for me but for um, initial like first impressions i think it looks pretty nice you let me know what you think you think i think it looks like a great shade match so i'm not I'm mad about it um let's talk about the gucci blushes so the gucci blushes are so much prettier than i thought they would be i think there is kind of like this luminosity that's happening naturally uh which i was hoping would happen so this is again is rosy beige over here and then this, this is the bright coral 04 bright coral and then this is 05 rosy beige i'm liking this more than i thought it would actually it looks really kind of like a neutral really kind of like just really kind of put together chiseled look I really like that it looks really nice with this kind of this look here and this is definitely um, I put it more back here I actually love both of these for different reasons but let me know which one you like the formula reminds me of the Suku melting powder blush but not as luminescent so I know a lot of people were interested in the Suku melting powder blush but then because it's mostly available in the UK and Asia that it can be really challenging to get. It's really kind of not accessible because they have to pay import fees and then Selfridges, they charge you extra obviously because they're in the UK and then you have to pay extra for shipping. So if you were ever interested in trying something similar to the melting powder blush formula, I would say try the Gucci, uh, these Gucci blushes because they're really, really beautiful. So that is what it looks like up close. It's wearing well. And I'll also pin a comment below of how these are wearing through the day because sometimes, as you know, um, I, you know, I like blush and then sometimes it doesn't wear well through the day and it'll disappear. And that's especially true for me because I have such oily skin, sometimes blush just kind of lifts off and disappears. So I'll let you know how these blushes wear throughout the day. These are definitely spendy. I don't think you have to get these now, but if you, if you can get these on sale, I would recommend getting these on sale because they're up there in terms of my blushes of like high-end blushes. I think they're really, really, really beautiful. They're I'm very surprised. I was not having much expectations of these and they're much more beautiful than in person than I thought. Um, I actually think I like the way it looks and wears so far. I like these more than Pat McGrath, but Pat McGrath, I love her color stories more just because 
she knows how to work on skin tones and undertones of a diverse group of people but in terms of formula wise this is beautiful and so that's it for my first Im impressions and review and if you would love to support my beauty channel i would really appreciate it you can comment and like below and if you feel like you want to buy some of these products go ahead i have affiliate links down below no pressure i'm just really great grateful that you're here to watch the video and anything that i earn in terms of commissions from the affiliate links I will put back into the channel to buy more products to review for you on tan brown skin. So that's it, beauty fam. And as always, be very kind to yourself and others and just be you. And until the next video, take good care. Bye.